It's the Sawcast. Real niggas speak that real shit on real topics every Tuesday. And I go by the name of Steve O. And I'm Ariel. What the fuck you do, y'all? You know what I'm saying? It's another fucking episode of the podcast. And, you know what I'm saying? Thank y'all for fucking joining us. And sit the fuck down. And we gonna give y'all a motherfucking show. Y'all ready to go? Y'all ready to go? Yeah. Let's get it. Let's get it to All right. First current event of the week is... And what's it, Antonio Tony Brown? Oprah. I be forget A B Antonio Brown. You know, we watched the I Am Athlete interview, um, and it was so entertaining. So Stephen, what did you get really from that interview from A B? Um, I got his side of the story. Uh, I know you were really passionate about, you know what I'm saying, listening to what he had to say and you know, not necessarily taking you know the team stand on that immediately so yeah how did you feel about that yes because i know that there's politics in this and you have to save face sometimes so i i understand you know that we human and we have emotions that's why i didn't just automatically judge him and i'm glad i didn't because watching the cat uh watching the podcast the i am athlete podcast i realized you know that he, I mean, the way he handled it, you know, was the way that he handled it, handled it, but it wasn't what they said it was either, you know. So, watching that gave some clarification to what I was already thinking. Yeah, I feel like it was a really good um, and entertaining um, show, and it just showed that, you know, you never know what people are going through behind the scenes. You cannot judge people based off of what you see on TV. You know, if a player is, I, I'm I'm not going to lie. I was on the side of he shouldn't have did that. You know what I'm saying? It's a place and a time at work. You have to act a certain way. And it's just a lot of things that were going on behind the scenes that we just did not know about. And I know he had mentioned that, um, I believe this was when he was talking with his lawyer on another interview that the team kept shooting up toward on to his what was the ankle or something like that so that he could keep playing and so the way that that would probably do you know what i'm saying the way that i could see that messing up a player's mind and it's like am i some sort of like dog you know what i'm saying i have some sort of like pets like that you got to keep on shooting me up in order for me to play for your team you know, so that we can win a Super Bowl. Is that all that it matters? Like, so does my health not matter to the team? And then just feeling like my health doesn't matter to the team. Feeling like my opinions don't matter to my coach. And feeling like um, nobody's listening to what I have to say. Well, and so just getting frustrated at that point and then, and then uh, st- getting off the field, even off the field. Then now, now it's understandable why he did what he did. So I will so say that. it's also... Listening to I Am Athlete, I watch the episode with LaShawn McCoy. Um, you know, you probably a lot of football um, enthusiasts and, you know, people that watch football, the sports, the fans. You know, we, we might know him from the Eagles. You know, he played for the Eagles. He played for the Chiefs. He played for some other teams as well. But he knows AB. He was saying, you know, he was bringing up an important thing, you know. So he was saying that. You know, A.B. is used to being a man. You know, Antonio mm-hmm. Brown used to being a man. So when you at a when you on a team and there's another person that's the man, you know what I'm saying? It's another person that's that hot guy right now. Right, right, right. So him not getting used to used to him not being a man because he can make certain demands when he's at Pittsburgh. You know what I'm saying? He's not at Pittsburgh anymore. So now he's still a great player. But there's other people who who are uh, who who are their number one go to. Mm-hmm. But also with that, um, Lashawn McCoy brought up something, brought up another important topic too, is that the fact that the head coach didn't even really want him. You know, the the head coach didn't the head coach of Tampa Bay didn't really even want to mess That's with Antonio me. Brown. So okay. we got to think about that too. So it's like. Okay, I don't really want to fuck with you. Yassi, yassi, blah, 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 you know. And then, you know, I posted a post about uh, when Gronk got his his incentive and then um, AB didn't reach his incentive and I was blaming it on Brady. But then, you know, I got I to gotta say that I had to retract that because 
A B said he don't blame Brady. So if the if it comes from the man himself saying he don't blame Brady, he blame the system and the coaches. Okay, you know what I'm saying? You gotta you gotta you gotta put that up where it was at, you know. But I still was on his side regardless. Yeah. You know, but as he said, the man that's in the situation, he said he didn't blame Brady, so I can't blame Brady. So yeah, I'm just making that a clarification. Yeah, and so um another thing that was brought up was that um in the interview I watched with his lawyer, two hundred they um the Bucks offered him two hundred thousand dollars to seek mental, you know, health treatment. And they were just like, we really care about your health and we don't want you guys to spend this into something else and try to make it something else. That was very, the team made that very clear that they didn't, the general manager of the team made that very clear that he did not want him to spend that and make it something else. And so um, I think that that was a move on the team's part in order to basically, it's like a PR thing where, you know, we want to keep you on a team. We know that you're, you know, we know that you are contributing to the team. And what you did looks bad, you know, to everybody else. Nobody's going to really, it's not a lot of people that would do research like me and Steven did. That's the reason why we're here, so that we can tell you guys the backstory. But it's not a lot of people who want to do research and figure out why, you know, um, he did what he did, you know. So it looks like he just stormed off the field in order, and it looks it looks crazy. Right, and so, right, you know, right. what what they're trying to do is, you know, show the public that you know you basically that would be saying like you he know he made a mistake right yeah, and yeah. um that he's trying to change and that would look better on the public and then it would be easier for him to come back and play so for i sure. think that that's what what that was for and sure. he just wasn't going for it and you know he i i, I don't know how i feel about that i mean he could have went to treatment. He could have not went to treatment. I mean, I feel like at the end of the day, he was at his wit's end with it, and he just didn't want to be bothered with it anymore. Yeah, because I feel like that was a way to spin a story. It was because it's image based. Let's not be let's you know let's let's put it factually. It's image based, and our people, you know, a black a uh, uh, black people, they try to put us. It's crazy sometimes, you know. They try to say that we have, you know, it's something wrong with him. He's, he's crazy. He's going da 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 da, and you don't ever look at the backstory. So now that we told John and informed John the backstory, now it makes more sense why they would want to give him two hundred thousand and say, okay, sit, sit down on the sideline, and then say you're going through treatment. Say you, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But he, he is bringing awareness to things like this. Um, and let me reference I Am Athlete again because they were talking about, like, there's some players mm -hmm. that are going through similar, that may have went through similar things or are going through similar things like that. But because you want the bag, you compromise your morals. Yeah. Because you want the bag, you will sit down and be quiet sometimes. So him being extra, he already probably knew subconsciously and he probably honestly already thought that out. Like, okay, if I do this, it's going to bring more awareness to the circumstance in this situation. So unless you bring awareness to something, it's not going to change, especially on such a grand platform like okay. that. That's a billion-dollar business. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So you got, you, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Multi-billion-dollar business. Like, they, they playing with some, some real money over there. You know what I'm saying? They chump change. So the way that they can manipulate situations with money, you know what I'm saying? Who, who to say... The next man wouldn't have took that two hundred thousand, sat on the sideline for about a week. If they if they won that playoff game, you know, then came out and said, you know, I acted a little irrationally, but I think that, you know, I, I'm back to my wish now. And then next year get signed for another however million. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you gotta stick to your guns, and I um, I commend him for sticking to his guns. And it's crazy how they try to manipulate him with that two hundred thousand dollars. Um, but to me, at the end of the day, it's just, you sticking to your guns is not going to, like, um, like, A.B. sticking to his guns is, to me, is not going to, like, change history or anything like that. Like, um, I feel like his team could have did other things in order to, you know, maybe get his PR together after that, um, He's just to me. He's he he. We can't act like he doesn't act irrationally. 
You know, he does act a little irrational. He does act a little crazy. I'm not saying he's crazy, just saying he acts a little irrational sometimes. And he sometimes he does take these too far. In this instance, clearly, I don't think that that was the case now that I'm hearing the backstory. But if this is what he wants to do as a football player, this is what he's going to have to deal with. And he knows the game, and he knows he's been in it for a long time. So I feel like he's going to have to compromise. There's no way. Like, it's... Either you're going to compromise or you're not going to play football. You're not like yeah, to, sure. when I heard him say was that he wanted to get another ring. And so in order for him to get another ring, he has to compromise. He cannot go against them. Um, it would have to be more people behind him. And maybe that's what he's doing right now with hanging out with celebrities, people who are billionaires and things like that, because they have more persuasion, persuasiveness towards people of that caliber. But if he doesn't, you know, he at the end of the day he has to he has he's going to have to compromise some type of way. And so I feel like him and his team should just get together what that looks like for them. And Yeah, I feel like he should, he just yeah. needs to go to a coach, you know, the next um I hope he does. I'm just speaking into the future. Mm-hmm. The next job that he gets, I hope that it's with a um people person coach or at least a coach that he gains a relationship with because if you know you jump out the gate you don't have a relationship with your coach you're not willing to do certain things that you would do for a coach that you have have a relationship with you know because you know all coaches you know say hey you know chill out or you know they they all you know might have been state best player you know everybody who's ever played a sport knows that the star has has been punished in some type of way or another before so um i think it really um, one thing that we wasn't thinking about prior was the relationship mm-hmm. with the coach too. Yeah. So I think the next time, you know, the next go around, just get, him to get yeah, because reach his goals, which is to get yeah, on the Super Bowl. From what he said, definitely. So just get a get with a get with an organization that you like that he likes, and then get with a coach that you know he can relate to and that you know it's cool with him. So yeah. Yep. So next topic is Kanye West. Kanye West returned okay. unreleased, unreleased, some unreleased footage of. Ray J and Kim that was on a laptop um, that he got from Ray J and he you know he he got that back and he got it to Kim. <laughs> um, from what I've heard and what I've read, um, Whack One Hundred um, got word of you know the laptop. Let Kanye know Kanye found out about it. He went to Ray J and he got the laptop from Ray J. Um, it's probably been at least ten years since that you know tape has came out maybe more and so I feel like that was a wonderful gesture because of course like from what from what was said she cried when she got it you know and I'm sure she it's a, it's a big burden you know especially to have four kids and you know um if they ever asked how their mom got famous that is the reason why she got famous <laughs> and so um just to have footage of yourself that you thought you would never get back and you get it back, that's something that, you know, I'm sure she felt great about. But at the end of the day, it's been a few years now. And so, who knows? That shit could have been copied over and over and over. But I see what he was trying to do. Kanye's clearly trying to get his family back. So, you know, to me, it was a nice gesture. What do you think? Do you think it was? What, what do you think his aim was in doing that? His aim was definitely to gain the advantage you know, in getting at least in good graces with her. Yeah, I, I don't like, know if it's yeah. technically getting back with her. I know it's getting good, being in good graces with her, and that just goes to show that as he elevated in stature and success, that you can do different things when you're on that level. You know, people tell you different things because you have access to different people. You know, and then um, Kanye's always been a man that speaks how he feels and, yeah. you know, things of that nature. And then he probably, you know, he's a thinker, you know. Mm-hmm. So he probably thought about that, like, all right, if I heard about that, he probably reached out to Ray J or something. You know, hey, look, uh, do you still got that? And Definitely talk reached the out money. to Ray J. He can talk he money now. Did, yeah. He can talk money because Ray J is a businessman. you business know man. that Ray J got some money out of this. <clears throat> yeah. There's no, there's no doubt in my mind that Ray J got some money out of this. Yeah, Ray J is a businessman, so he talked business with a businessman, and then he's showing her, like, look, you know, I'm still giving effort. So, you see, you know, I got that. Boom. Uh, it's on the whole laptop. Boom. We got to, uh, it's, it's to you. 
You feel me? So, what, what you trying to do? Like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm out here doing these publicity stunts. But that don't mean shit, you know. Motherfucking men always do publicity stunts. That ain't shit. So, he just trying to come back and show you what, what reality is. Like, he still got heart. He still care for you. He still lives uh, yeah. right there next door to you. Right, right, right. <laughs> shit. Let's not forget that. God mm-hmm. damn it. So, yeah, I feel like it was a, a good gesture. Um, but I also feel like, I mean, I mean, I also, a part of me was like, did it even matter? Because it was so long ago. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, like. I don't know who who's seen the footage or you know what I'm saying if it's been I saw this footage if it's been copied or you ain't seen the footage. Not that, not the unreleased, but yeah. I, I, I'm saying the original okay, little who snippet. It? Who have it? Know. But it's like we who all done seen it. You're right. Most she got us. famous because we all seen it. So I'm saying. yeah, and um, <laughs> so yeah, Ray J got some money out of it. So and I I love Ray J so. I'm just ha- I mean, the whole situation sounds like, you know, win win for somebody. Win win for everybody, really. Right. So win, I'm win. I'm all for it. You win, they win. <laughs> Next topic is Lawrence <laughs> Smith Fields. Is oh, it Lawrence Smith Fields? Yes, I want to make sure. Smith-Fields. I want to make sure. Um, rest in peace to her. R.I.P. We about to get real real right now. <sighs> so Lawrence Smith Fields um, was on Bumble one night, and she met a man. I believe he was about. 37 years old she met this man she was talking to him for like three days she invited him over they got food they turned up they smoked and um he said she passed out on the couch he passed out on the couch he said he took her to the bedroom and he laid her on the bed and she was she was sleeping he was like i went i got up to pee at three o'clock and she was up she was snoring Snoring. i heard her snoring at 3 3 a.m when i got up to pee Got up at 6 a.m. three hours later, and then I saw that her nose was bleeding. I mean, I know, saw her nose was bleeding. Mm-hmm. And she, so I but, caught... Wait. What? He said, I saw her nose was bleeding, and she was laying on the side of her. Laying on her in her laying, bed. Laying on her, on her side. Back. No. She was, was on her back. No. She was laying on her side. He said that she was laying... When he when he saw her nose bleeding, she was bleeding on her nostril, mm-hmm. and she was laying on her side. So... Okay. okay. So she was laying on her side, um, and then he called the police, and you know the ambulance came, and you know she was she was dead. He said Not she was she wasn't she wasn't conscious when he found her, and so um, then he you know called the ambulance. They came and got her, and they took her to the hospital. Meanwhile, her mom is texting her this whole time, like I haven't talked to you. What is going on? Where you at? Where you at? Oh yeah, I missed, failed to mention. I'm sorry about this, guys. Um. Sh- it said that she, the the guy, the, the 37-year-old man said that she went outside to talk to her brother for 15 minutes. And, he, and then she came back in. She went to the bathroom. And then she came back out. And they continued on their night. Yeah. So, he wanted to make sure that was, that part was in there. Right. And so, um, fast forward. Um, her mom's texting her, like, what's going on? She's not texting her mom back. Her mom is very worried about her. It's probably been a day since she has seen her. Yeah. So her and her her mom and her brother went to her house to see like what's going on where she at. Um, the landlord had a note on her door and said, "If you're looking for Lauren, please call this number." Her mom called the number, and um, the landlord, came, the downstairs. landlord came downstairs and told her what happened. She's you know she's pronounced dead, and and called the detective that, and gave her the detective's number. The detective she called a detective and the detective told her that. Her daughter was dead. Um, they they knew her daughter was dead for what a day or two. Never it was about t- a day. Detective Detective Cronin. Yeah, he. Cronin. She never. Cronin. They never. They never once reached out to her family nope. and told them that she was dead. Police even though they had um, her cell phone, um, they did not reach out to you know the yeah. police department. I mean, the her family to tell them that she had passed. Even though her mother was texting her that phone. Um, right. And so, um, her parent, her mom is just distraught, of course, distraught, and just she's asking for justice and trying to figure out what happened to her daughter, like she should, as she should, and it just doesn't sound like a a, a good thing. Um, the coroner, the coroner did a um, screening on her body, and from what they said, she died of an accident, accidental. I mean, she died on accident. Um, supposedly, she had 
in and on her body. And that fentanyl, fentanyl overdose, supposedly. Yeah, supposedly she was mi- she mixed that fentanyl that she had in her system with, uh, with tequila. With tequila and I think marijuana maybe. And Possibly, but they said tequila for sure. And yeah, fentanyl. and that's what killed her. And so that's why they ruled it an accident. Um, when her mom talked to the detective, she said, who was my daughter with? And she said, he was a man, and we're not going to tell you who the man is. He was a nice person. He was a great guy. He gave us all the information we needed. You don't need to talk to him. Even right. though the man, when he did talk to the police, he did not say really anything to the police. Gave minimal information. And he called a lawyer immediately, which, of course, he's a 37-year-old man, white man. He probably has money, which is probably why she was even attracted to him in the first place. And um, he knows what to do. When the police, you know, yeah, when arrest, you have, you know, him. when you have something like that that's going on, you know, to stay quiet, give minimal information, um, look sorrowful, you know, he was shaking this and that, yeah, so he was visibly yeah, trembling, trembling, but what does that mean? Like, yeah, you can be trembling, um, in fear, you can be trembling because you're nervous, yeah, you know, so it doesn't mean that you're trembling because. You actually feel resent resentment. You could be trembling because oh gosh, like I fucked up. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. when the media tries to create a story, always look at the facts. Always look at the facts and don't let them jumble up shit because they do a great job of that. And um, I think you have some facts about the fentanyl overdoses that you're oh. reading off to me <laughs> before. Yeah, uh, so. We, I just wanted to give everybody this story first before I start yeah, reading yeah. off facts. the facts <laughs> about the fentanyl. About fentanyl. Yeah, let, let's go to the facts about fentanyl. Um, so there was a study done, um, a toxicology study for um, data on uh, like on victims of fentanyl overdoses, and <laughs> there were. Um, it was okay. It was a study of the toxicology data. The autopsy findings and the coroner's investigate investigative reports were reviewed in order to construct a profile of typical fentanyl overdose victims. And so this is the profile of a, or this is the typical fentanyl overdose user or victim. The typical fentanyl overdose victim is this victim. 32, ages 32 years old, plus or minus 6 or 7 years of age. That means 32 years old plus or plus 6, which is what, 32 to 30, what, 8? 38. Or 40. Mm-hmm. Minus, or 32 minus 6 or 7, which is 26. 25, 26. 25, 26. So it's from 26 to 40. That is the age range of most people who have overdosed on fentanyl. Number two, this those were seventy-eight um, percent were male. Twenty-two percent were female. Mm. Let me say that one more time: seventy-eight percent were males. Twenty-eight percent, I mean, twenty-two percent were females. So that tell. Now we got it right now: twenty-five to forty. And most likely male. Seventy eight percent likely to be male. Seventy eight. Let's go to the race. Fifty percent of them were Caucasian. Twenty nine percent Hispanic, also known as white. Twenty percent black and point nine percent Asian. That means there is a fifty percent chance that the person is white. White a white Man in his 30s. So a white male in his 30s is the is the typical fentanyl overdose victim. She does not fit that description. description. He does, however. So I don't feel like there's no evidence to prove that she was using fentanyl. Fentanyl, if you're a user of fentanyl, you there you're obvious there's there's obvious signs that you're using fentanyl, that you're using drugs. 
because it's very close to heroin. Heroin users and fentanyl users, if you Google it, it will show you that they are similar type of people. Caucasian you symptoms and the signs. Yes, of a person Caucasian people using those type of drugs. Yes, Caucasian people who are of this age who are most likely males. So she does not fit that description, um, especially of an overdose. Mm. And if she was doing fentanyl, her family is very close to her. They would know that. Definitely. If she if she was doing like if she was so that's why I said that part where he where he made sure he threw in there, she went outside to see her brother, came back in, went to the bathroom fifteen, twenty minutes. So he's trying to make it seem like she went out there, probably did some because he because he she, just possibly could not have been the one who right he 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 couldn't been even though he fentanyl. fits the description of somebody who does fentanyl and overdoses on fentanyl not does it overdoses and dies overdoses and dies off of fentanyl he fits that description perfectly fentanyl is not a black drug no statistically statistically it's not an speaking. Asian drug definitely statistically Hispanics are known as white. On the census, so if we, if even if we take if fifty percent of them are white, but if we take the Hispanic two, that's seventy percent. So the the average fentanyl user is not black. It's not a black woman. No, definitely not a black woman. If they were black, it wouldn't be. A and black like woman. I said, she was that close to her family to where if she was doing something like that, they would know that she was doing something like we're that. Being alert. There's no evidence, or there's no proof that she even does fentanyl or anything and like you know the that. Worst part Any is, substance like that. You know the worst part is? Is they probably wouldn't have been they probably wouldn't even have been investigating this case if it wasn't for the power of social media. They definitely wouldn't and I don't they they haven't even they haven't even tested this man to see if he had fentanyl on his body. They did minimal amount of work and it has been statistically proven that black people eat, uh, um, black women as well, you know, when it comes to cases, you know, um, homicide cases, such things like that are cases of death. Let's just say that when somebody dies, they usually do the minimal amount of work yes. to, to investigate, you know, because it was like 50% of um, most like cases get solved with with like I think it's uh, uh, white people, but then with I think it was like white women, but then with black women that goes down substantially mm -hmm. to like twenty percent or something yeah, like that. Yes. It's something really ridiculous, you know. Um, I don't like it's so crazy because um, things are so much put against us, and then like we. I, you really don't realize things until a case like this come, uh, comes around. And this probably happens um, more often than we know because we're drowned out by all the BS that they have us distracted by. So when something like this comes around, most of the time we might just even retweet it, but we might not even go in depth. You know, going in depth on things like this are sad because it's a reality. Like, um... We have to protect ourselves, you know, women, um, as well as men, but especially women, black women out there, um, all women out there. Please start vetting people before you start dating them, before you start dating them. Um, I know that these dating apps are a popular thing now. I know it's probably going to deter a lot of women from using apps because the stories like this are happening and they're becoming more frequent. Um, but yes, women, please start vetting people before you even meet them. Um, I'm so sorry, uh, so s sorry that her family had to lose yeah. her, um, at such a young age. Um, she was very, yes. Yes. And like, like I, like, like, like I said, like, like we gotta I start vetting people before we meet them on all, you know, no matter who they are, but especially in cases like that, because, Certain people can get away with things that other people cannot, and the system is set in place for those to protect those who are the majority. Yeah. So, so us knowing yeah. that we're the minority, we have to fucking stay on our toes all 
the fucking time. Yeah, but it's at the end of the day, I understand because I'm a woman and meeting people on, on social media. Sometimes, I'm sure this is not her first time meeting somebody and she's completely was fine. Um, but at the end of the day, um, we have to pay attention to the things that are going on around us and we cannot just 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 the fact that you guys know now the kind of men who are into fentanyl and those type of drugs you can know that you might have to vet those men and extra extra, extra vet be, before you even go into something like this and try to date them and meet them and bring them to your house and stuff like that um but i just want to emphasize the fact that we are not protected by anybody and so it's just it's very sad and it's it's very it makes you uneasy um to see how much people do not care about black women and our struggles and things like that and it's what really makes me mad is that that the mumble actually said that the police didn't contact us asking us for no information, no text or nothing between them. They ain't asked us about none of, nothing that has to do with that person. We don't know. Hey, we don't know if he's been talking to people and doing stuff. The police wouldn't even tell them, like the police or the news wouldn't even tell us who the man was. Barely and it's crazy because if there was a white woman who met up with a black man and she became dead, you think we won't know that black man's name? All over the news. His worst picture that he has on any media platform would been posted. When they first, when we first heard about that story, she had a swimsuit picture posted and he had a fucking hiking trip fucking um, um, post. You know, a, a hiking trip photo of him hiking looking like, oh, your average American on a trip. But she was looking you know in a sexual manner so they were already trying to paint a certain picture because they know that um when certain people view that they're already going to think a certain way if they see if they see somebody in that light you know what i'm saying if they see a black woman like that and they see a, a white man it looks like oh he's innocent you know what i'm saying um even looking at that picture he looks like he could have something going on behind his eyes because if you really peep that he looked like he could be up to something you know, but it it's still like it's sad to me that um, our women are not protected in that way. Like it kind of angers me. Not ain't kind of it does anger me because it's like this is some bullshit, you know. And I know we always talk, you know, talk about slavery and how things have changed, but how much have they truly changed? Like how much has shit truly changed? You know what I'm saying? Like, um. Things are just, it's just crazy, man. It's just wild. Like, like yeah, women, like, I just want y'all to pr protect yourself. But then talking on a protect aspect, too, like, like men, men, black men specifically, can we uplift our women more now? You know, can, um, I feel we like protect it shouldn't, our women it shouldn't take well? this for y'all to do that. But I'm, My say, thing, I'm just okay, saying, okay, so I'm what I want to say is, what I want to say is, for black men, period, you, this is the reason why us as a black community, needs to get our money up we need to get our finances up we need to get our we need to learn about the economy because this man had a lawyer all this went away because he had a lawyer because he had the funds to get a a lawyer that was very credible and so you know what i'm saying there's plenty of times where we get in situations where we cannot get out of them because we do not have a lawyer Okay. Or if we have a lawyer, they're not right. credible. So this is what we need to start making sure that we are accounted for by by one our legal staff. We need to get we need to make sure our finances are correct because we get with too many of us in jail right now for things that we didn't do. And this man could have possibly done this, and he's never going to probably see jail because he has a lawyer. So I just want to make sure that that's a point that we make. He's literally getting off because of this lawyer. Whoever this lawyer is must be great at their job. He wasn't named in the newspaper 
I mean, in the news, no news articles or anything. Didn't want to even put his face up. People had to find this man. Find him, literally. So that should tell black people right there that you need to, we definitely need to make sure that we have accurate money. We need to make sure we are being financially literate so that we can have legal counsel so that we can make sure that we protect ourselves like they protect themselves. So, yeah, that's what I wanted to say. And we, we RIP to her and, yeah. you know, we're sending Hopefully prayers to the justice. family. Prayers. And, hope. you know, black women, watch out for each other. Watch. We have to watch out for each other. These men are not going to watch out for us, black or white. They're not. So, you know, Steve, Steven's a, mi a minority, unfortunately. So make sure that you watch out and protect yourself. You know, I know her brother feels some type of way. He's probably the same kind of guy as Steven. He went to check on her, right. you know, so RIP to her. And hopefully she gets justice. Her family gets justice for this. This is crazy. Wow. I'm tired of this. Wow. Next topic. Man refuses to get the COVID-19 vaccine. Um, he was in line to get a heart transplant. And he was denied a new heart because he would not get the COVID vaccine. Um, I believe that um, that would... I think that they looked at that as a waste of a heart. Um, because, the, because any vulnerabilities um, can cause you to die from COVID. And so he wasn't awarded a heart because of that. He was first on the list, and because he he denied getting the COVID vaccine, he will not get a heart now. And he said he didn't believe in it, and he wants to stick to his guns. And you know his family's pissed, but that's the decision that he made. So Stephen, what do you think about that? I think that the, the since you're so. Uh, and you so be your and uh go with your uh gut and don't pick this and pick the right thing for you and all this extra stuff. How do you feel about it then? Because he ain't getting the vaccine. He he rather die clearly than get the vaccine. Nah, he rather die. That's what he's. That's what's gonna happen. We don't know. You that can't for live sure. without no heart. We we don't we don't know that for sure. You cannot live without a heart. I'm not saying that you can't live without you a heart. You for sure cannot live without a heart. I'm not saying that you can't live oh, without okay. a heart. I'm saying that we don't know in his circumstances how bad that his health condition was. He you know? his con health condition was so bad that he needed a new heart. What else what more do you need to know? Hey, look. So how do you feel? Cuz you said stick to your guns. If you would Shut up for a second. <laughs> you would you would see how I feel, but you're so vax, vax, vax that you can't listen to what I'm trying to say. You what know? the hell are you going to say? If you be quiet, you will listen. Okay? We got two ears and one mouth, but you're using your mouth more than your ears right now. What are you going to say? This all this bullshit. You just want to say what you're going to say. Because you, you're talking. You keep okay, talking. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. And I want to talk. Okay. Thank you. So... It's just more that they're doing to instill fear, but now, and, and the people who are unvaxxed, but now they're getting um, even more serious with it. So, I don't believe that they should have denied him the heart transplant. In my personal opinion, they should have gave him a form to sign to say, hey, if you do get sick um, during this procedure, or, or you know, if, if something like COVID related things happen to you during this procedure, um, we're not liable for what goes on. And if he signs that and the procedure goes through, bam, you know, if there are any complications that are COVID related, then the the um, establishment, establishment would not be um, held accountable for that. But I do not feel like they should have um, held him back from getting a heart transplant. And that's my stance on that. Okay. Um, I feel like, what? Like, okay, so my opinion on it is I feel like you don't care about your life. So why should we give a heart to somebody who doesn't really care about their life? Like, we're not going to waste a heart on somebody who doesn't give a damn about their life. You literally had a decision whether or not 
to could live and you chose to die because you don't want to get a vaccine that is FDA approved over what I believe like 75% of the country has got it. So what do you think you're like the odd one out that's going to die of getting the vaccine? You know what I'm saying? 75% of us that got it. You're, you're like, and so, you know, Hey, it's between a shot in my life and you chose you chose not to get the shot, then that means that a heart is not even that important to you. So why would I give you a heart before I give all these other people on this list a heart when you don't give a fuck about your life? It don't even matter if it was COVID or anything. It's a shot that pe- that is deemed safe by your country, which is... Doesn't mean a lot. United States is looked at as one of the highest medical, you know, in the highest in medical... You know, research in the world. And so, you chose to go against that and chose, hey, if it's between this shot or a heart, I'm a... uh, Fuck the heart. Like, you don't care about your life. And so, you should not be awarded a heart before somebody else. Who cares about their life? Like if if you had you if you had to choose like if it was between getting a shot or me dying, then I'm gonna choose to get the shot. That's really what it comes down to. And so you chose to not get the shot. So you don't give a fuck about your life. So why would I give a heart to somebody who don't give a fuck about their life? Doesn't make sense. So it makes that. it makes a whole lot of sense. People want to stick to their guns. Where do you stick to your guns on? Not getting a fucking shot? Have you lost your fucking mind? Hey, obviously you have. And you don't give a fuck. And that's okay. Nobody's going to argue with you about that. It shouldn't be an argument. Nobody's arguing. We'll just give it to somebody else who cares about their life. And it cares about the life of others. This is a donor's heart. This is somebody who cared about their life. You know what I'm saying? Cared about your life enough to when they die... They gave their heart to they they signed over their their organs to somebody else because they care about somebody else's life. After theirs is gone, they're like, I care. I want somebody else to live. I'm okay with them taking my organs and I want them to live. And you said you chose you're choosing death. You don't deserve their fucking heart. Give their heart to somebody who cares. And that's my opinion on it. What, Steven? This whole vax versus unvax thing is, in a couple of years, we're going to sit back and laugh at this. You know, This is shit is not funny. We're going to laugh at this. Cause this it's shit gonna is be, not funny. It's gonna be, this shit is not funny. This shit is not funny. When you're in anything, it's never funny. When you're in anything depressing, it's never funny. You know what I'm saying? It's never enjoyable, you know? But in a couple of years, we're going to be like, we really were talking about vax versus unvax. It's gonna be another one of them shots that you choose to get. Or we've never had a we never we've never or, had or a debate whether or not motherfuckers was gonna get vaccines or not. So we so we so want to be we want to be that's in the land shit. of the free. That's what I say. We want to be in the land of the free. That's what I'm saying. We want to be in the land of that's the free. That's what I'm saying. Sometimes free choice. Sometimes freedom f- ain't free. Be fucking right. y'all up sometimes. Freedom ain't head. free, right? My Americans, we free, free as hell. Freedom ain't free. We are free as fuck. Because, you know what I'm saying, we are so free that we can, we have the this choice to put other people in danger to make ourselves other, ourselves happy. You know what I'm saying, to stand up against some shit that ain't even shit to stand up on. There's so much shit to stand up on. Y'all mad, y'all, y'all trying to stand up over a fucking shot? Are y'all fucking crazy? So this motherfucker don't want to get the shot? You don't, you don't want to live. So get a heart to somebody who care. And that's what that's all I don't gotta say about well, it. Well, I will end off by saying I do not believe that that person does not care about themselves. They clearly don't. Just because they're not getting a shot. It's a shot. You've been, you been getting stuck. Listen, in to right stuck. Listen to what we're saying right now. Listen to what we're saying right now. You've been getting right stuck. Now. You don't even. You don't know. You didn't go to medical school. So when they put in this IV in you, you really don't know what the fuck they put in you. But you just know. You just know for a fact. Whatever's in that shot, I just don't want to hear me. 
You've been getting stuck in product. If you need a heart, you've been getting stuck in product for months, for probably years. With stuff that you don't need. You think that you know what the fuck they doing, but you really don't really know what they doing. Unless you a nurse, you don't know what this is. You don't know what that is. You don't know what's in that. You don't know what's in this. So it's like, what, what are we really arguing about? What are we really... What I are you that, standing up against? I think that... The, the, your, your freedom of a choice. Vats, your choice. You want the, to be able to choose what you want to do with your life. And that's okay. But legally... We ain't gotta. We don't gotta. We don't have to agree with what the fuck you saying. You know what I'm saying? You can choose that, but it's consequences that come with your choices. Clearly, in America, shows you that she's always gonna come out on top. Period. There you go. Next, um, simply lemonade will be releasing a spice simply lemonade and i will be partaking in the shenanigans um somebody says i thought it said summer when it comes summer. out in the summertime who knows when it's coming out they're gonna hit I, us with a whim. it's gonna come out in black spring people spring i ain't oh, never been summer. to a black person's oh. house who don't like simply lemonade i love lemonade that is probably the number one form of juice water and sugar water and sugar <laughs> mixture <water> and sugar <laughs> Cause, I mean, lemon juice, shit. lemon juice, water, and sugar. That is the best combination of motherfucking, you know, drink that could possibly be even here. And so I'm <laughs> so happy for this. I'm going to drink it. You know, every every party I'm gonna have is gonna have some spice. Not every simply. party, come on, bro. Not every party, bro. It's gonna be at the house. She <laughs> put it there. Now, it's definitely gonna get it's drank. gonna be it's gonna get consumed and it's gonna be, it's gonna be and I just really hope that I don't drink it quick like I do the simply lemonade because he even drink I don't even know why I'm rather acting like him he drinks simply lemonade simply orange juice simply whatever peach he's it's over I ain't about that. it don't even it don't last in here I ain't it ain't don't nothing last about it, it don't last I ain't so wait 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 it's done but that mini made spite but that mini made lemonade spite. That mini made lemonade a little different from those too. It hit. But that it's simply thick, it's thick, it's thick. Yeah, that simply is like more more like it's like they actually might put a little care into that shit. Like it ain't just all sugar. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. With simply it ain't just straight wham, just straight sugar. That mini made just straight it's sugar. It take, it kinda tastes like it's some it's some real fruit in there. A little bit. You know? Like they put a little you know what I'm saying? They ain't just put just just flavoring. Artificial. Right. Uh, uh, flavoring. Glucose. Flavoring. <laughs> they ain't just all flavoring. Hey, it's not all <laughs> high fructose syrup in that shit. Facts. Facts. It's a little bit thinner. You know, it, 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 you, get, you can drink that a little bit quicker. So, for oh a fact. Oh so, I'm definitely, we're definitely going to partake in the nigga tree. Hey, but you know, you know. I, I'm very excited about it. I will say this. I just hope Simply Don't Let Me Down like Crown did. That was the. Crown was, it was a good drink. It just wasn't strong. It, was good. it wasn't strong. That's what that you didn't like about it. That shit was weakity weak <laughs> as fuck. That's, it, that's definitely what I didn't like about it. That shit was weakity weak as fuck. I'm like, what the fuck Crown made this shit? And it, it's so, it tasted so fucking watered down. I was like, it's like you put, it's like you put, you had a mixed Crown drink and just threw half water in that motherfucker. That shit was disgusting. Like, why would I drink that? I drank one. To taste it, and I will not drink another one again. Lord it's a wrap, mercy. bro. If I'm drinking Crown, I'm gonna drink Crown. You know what I'm saying? That little mixture shit that they did, they can have that. Send that back. Bring something else out. You feel me? Motherfuckers who drink Crown, we don't drink motherfucking Crown to 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 have it watered down. We don't drink Crown to have it watered down. Get our shit right or take the shit back. I ain't fucking with that shit. He had to put that in there. Shitty. Lord have mercy. But yeah, but that's simply we'll get drink. We're, we're we're drinking on it. Next, Cardi B won her defamation suit against Tasha K. Congratulations to Cardi B for winning against the blogger Tasha K. If you if you don't know, she is a blogger. She has a YouTube show where she you know talks about you know blog things and you know it spills the tea. And so clearly this tea was cold because she lost the case. <laughs> Not cold. Um. So she lost one million dollars in damages and two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in medical expenses will be awarded to Cardi B. Um, I heard that uh, Tasha K is going to try to um, 
you know, she's going to try to test that and she's going to try to go back on that judgment and, you know, fight it again. But I just feel like, you know, it's probably cheaper for her to fight it again than it would actually be to pay her a million dollars. And so <laughs> I think that that's probably what's going on. And so I haven't necessarily watched Tasha K. I actually watched Tasha K. I haven't watched her since then. Um, I don't watch the messy things that she does more. So I watch I watch her interviews. Um, I watched her interview with um, Mary, Mary Jane Huntsville, the, the side chick from Mary Jane Huntsville. So I watched that, and that was pretty entertaining. But necessarily, I don't get into all that messy shit that she does. Um, I really don't follow blogs like that. The only blog I really follow is Baller Alert, because to me, they're just reporting on things. It's not necessarily some messy-ass shit. And so, um, yeah, I just feel like this is what bloggers go through. Um, there have been plenty of bloggers who got sued before. I'm sure TNZ been sued so many times for defamation. And um, this is just her lane. So she, I think she's pretty aware of that. And um, um, I'm glad that, you know, Cardi B, you know, was able to, you know, win that case. And um, because people saying things about you like that and, you know, the Internet doesn't forget anything. And so... You know, Tasha was looked at as a credible source, you know, from her page. And I'm sure she thought she got it from a credible source, whatever she heard about Cardi B. And so it's good that Cardi B got, you know, vindicated for that. And it was shown to be a lie. And she can go on about her life. And we all know that it was a lie. Sometimes when people spread lies about you and rumors about you, there's no way for you to get vindicated for it. And so the fact that she did, that is a good thing. And hopefully... um that starts a pattern where people can get vindicated for lies that, are, that yeah. I talked about. So yeah. if you a blogger, vlogger, whatever, you know, if you report on topics such as that or people, famous people, individuals, or local individuals, that should be a lesson for you. You know, if, if you receive some information and it is not verified, you might not want to say it, you know. So I'm not going to say, I don't know too much about this Tasha woman. Mm -hmm. But, you know, some people do. That is a popular thing. Say things, report things to get clickbait. Yeah. You know, clickbait is a thing. And if you don't know what clickbait is, let me fill you in. It's when you yeah, say some bullshit. Or, I ain't going to call it bullshit. But when you say something that gets somebody, mm. that, that, that gets, eh, the probably bullshit. The said it's bullshit. Bullshit, yeah. So <laughs> when you say something bullshit wise to get people to come in, you know what I'm saying? You'd be like, da da da, woo woo, blah blah blah. It could be false, but you're saying it with so much enthusiasm, and then you might have your title as dot dot dot, and then motherfuckers is like, whoa, hold on, let me go view that. This motherfucker talking about some crazy shit. And it probably might not even be true. <laughs> if it be, so if it probably ain't even true, God damn, your ass might get sued. Yeah, so that's just, like I said, I'm just happy that this is out there and hopefully, you know, um, the lies can stop, people can stop spreading lies about people. In 2022. People. Stop the rumors. Um, or you will be happy. You will have to pay a motherfucking one point five, one point. Well, it's, in this case, it's one point two five million. One million, a million, just a million. And if you ain't got it, you gonna keep on having to be in court, like Tasha K about to have to. But you ain't got the money to be fighting Cardi like this, Tasha. So you ain't got the money. But I know Tasha ain't got a million dollars. So I don't know what she finna do. Oh, that shit sure. Is. That shit sure is sure as going to be her taxes and everything going to be deducted for that's the why next we, That's why we put on the facts. It's okay. All, right. All facts be going to credible sources. And, you know, we ain't sitting up here gossiping because mm -hmm. that shit ain't it. I can't guys, I ain't got But, you know, I saw a video of her talking to Nicki Minaj. Was it Nicki Minaj, I believe? She's trying to be messy. Nicki wasn't even trying to do it with her. <laughs> and so, I think she's messy to the core. Mm. That might be the best bloggers messy to the core because a lot of bloggers are gay, oh. you know, males. Oh. So you know they're messy or they're women. I I don't really see a lot of straight male bloggers, and so because that's probably because our because our interest is not there. You know what I'm saying? True. Because for us to be like 
the things that they report on, they have to do research on. Mm-hmm. And men, we typically don't do that much research in a day or in a week. I mean, there's, you know? I mean, men are journalists because they're sportscasters and we're, stuff like we're that. We're journalists, yeah. but not on those subjects. Yeah. You know, those subjects don't interest us to but the point. But y'all kind of already, y'all, for some reason, y'all be knowing sports off the top of the dome. So it that's interests. probably not even that hard. Yeah, it's probably not that hard so for y'all like, to even do sportscasting. You wouldn't be that interested in a rumor about somebody else. A, you know, a disease about a celebrity. Shit. Like, we were like, yeah, yeah, whatever. You know what I'm saying? We're not about to go and deep dive in and try to go talk about that. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, shout out to Cardi B. Good thing she got, you know, yep, she yep. won her case and yep, yep. stop running your mouth. Y'all have facts. In 2022. And beyond. Next, Gucci Mane has a new Gucci song with Lil Dirt called Rumors. How you mm. feel about it? You like it? You know you what? Not? I was surprised when I saw that come across my uh, YouTube. Okay. Because I be in YouTube at work, and ever since I listen to one rap song, the motherfuckers be like, you must want to listen to rap. You want to do it. Right, you want to listen to rap. Let's go. The algorithm hit my ass. But I was like, you know what? I was like, okay, let me tap in. I mm-hmm. tapped in, and yeah. I listened to it, and then we talked about it. I was like, damn, that was a good song. you know. But I didn't expect that collaboration. I expect the Gucci and Dirt collaboration to happen. No, I Gucci. What you talking Gucci about? Gucci collabs with saying, everybody. But I just didn't. I don't know. I just didn't see them as two artists that would collab together. Um, just because I don't know. I ain't really think that they would sound good on a song together. They're I don't definitely know. I never, two different artists for sure. I never thought about them on a song They're together. Definitely two different artists. Not let me let me retract that. Not that I didn't think they would sound good on a song together. I never thought they They're would be two, two separate people. different artists. Yeah, yeah that would be yeah. on a song together. But I mean but Gucci, it worked. Did a, Gucci, it did a, Gucci did a whole mixtape with um Chief Keep which is similar. He did. It was incredible. But wait, Chief Keep I mean they spoke drill rapper. rappers. They both drill rappers. They in the same crew. Supposedly from the same neighborhood. I mean, supposedly from the same so, neighborhood. I think they're from the same neighborhood. OTS? I think so, yeah. OTS, yeah. So I didn't. I wasn't surprised, you know. But they got different I styles. Always, yeah, I mean, y'all know what I'm gonna say. They got different styles. About Gucci. Ay ay ay. Greatest great bar of all time. One of his biggest fans, clearly. It's he's not even that. Favorite. I just, I just know that he's the greatest rapper of all time. It's just the facts that prove it. It's just no. It's no facts that disprove what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> so at the end of the day, he can make a he can make song with anybody, he the and it's gonna be he a hit probably. Artists. He he pays attention to music. You know he pays attention to music. I think that's why him and Drake are probably like close friends because I think they they both really pay attention to the culture, what's going on in music and things like that, and they they understand people's sounds and stuff like that, and they try to get the the best. Um, producers and stuff to match people's sound and stuff like that. So I feel like it was a one. Of, it was fire song. Period. Collab, period. Collab it was fire, sure. and he did that. Next, um, Chris Brown is being sued for two twenty million dollars by a woman allegedly. Um, he raped her. Well, she said that he raped her on a yacht at Diddy's. Um, on Diddy's yacht, supposedly, um, she was on a Facetime with Chris and. Her and her friends on FaceTime with Chris, and she said Chris begged her to come to the party. She came to the party. Her and Chris was drinking. She was like, ooh, after the second drink, I started feeling, like, real dizzy. And then um, they went to the room, and she said she dinner. She passed out, woke up. He was on top of her, passed out, woke up. They was fucking passed out, you know. And she, it wasn't uh, under consent. So um, what I will say today is I'm going to go ahead and go first. I'm gonna say this. I've been and already told y'all this on the last on a, one of our last podcasts. This is the reason why men who are successful. This is the reason why men are more successful when they're married because they don't got to deal with shit like this. You know, they don't have to deal with all these different type of when you fucking with all these different type of women. You know, and the one and a lot of people are saying it's 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 illegitimate because she did not go to the police. And she, she said she didn't go to the police because she was embarrassed. She did not go to the police, but she went right to the courthouse and she and she put it in for a civil case of $20 million. And so they're saying that that's, 
that's that's saying that you know it's probably not true but we don't know what's true or what's false my thing is this is why y'all need to be married when y'all be successful because you don't have to deal with this when you dealing with different women when you keep on dealing with different women and you have a temperamental problem you know what i'm saying or you feel like you know what i'm saying once you deal with different women you get certain you started liking certain things and stuff like that all women ain't gonna be into that so you know what i'm saying you need to find your woman who's into that who likes that and who you can come home to and who stay when you're unstable and you keep on fucking with all these different women then this is what the fuck you're going to get you know so i feel like chris needs to figure it needs to sit the fuck down settle the fuck down he this single shit is not working for him you know what i'm saying he needs to sit the fuck down because if he was sitting down when kanye put kanye about to put out down the two are we hearing anything like that are we hearing anything about that? When, when Jay-Z's about to put his shit out, are we hearing anything like that? Married men, are we hearing anything like that? If L. Cool J put some shit out today, you think he had bitches back in the day? He was married. Do we hear anything before he put his album out? No. Because he's married. This is the reason why married men are more successful. Because image comes... Image is very important when you're successful. And when you're dealing with a whole bunch of different women, your image can be fucked up because there is so many different perspectives of who you are. Stability in, in, in how people feel about you, a stable person, how they feel about you, it's going to help the public look at you a different way. There's too many, it's too many opinions. It's too, too many different ways to view a certain one thing. You know what I'm saying? I don't even want to go into did he do with that or not because I don't want to discredit her and I don't want to discredit him. I love Chris. I don't want to discredit him. And I love black women. I don't want to discredit her. It's a singer. I don't know. But all I want to say is I just want men, if you want to be real successful like that, just make sure that you are married. Okay? Even if you are married and you do things like you cheat or something like that, it's you're not going to cheat that often on your wife to the point where you have things like this happening. It's going to be a smaller it's going to be a smaller group of women that you're fucking with, which is less problems. When you're doing shit like this, when you're seeing like this and mingling, doing all this extra shit, this is what comes with problems. Sit, settle the fuck down. Period. That's all I gotta say. Um you hit a lot of points there. You hit a lot of points yeah. there. You hit a lot of points there. What do you feel about the situation? Like I said, <sighs> I, I ain't feel like these going situations anyway. come out a lot in the credibility of the women in these circumstances. Um, sometimes it gets, let me say, lesson because sometimes it, it's, it's a false rumor. You know, and like you said, because she didn't go to the she didn't go to the police about it. She went straight to to civil court, right? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, she could have not went to the police about it because of what we were saying previously that she knows she's probably not protected anyway. Mm-hmm. So she could have went to civil because she's like, I know I can hurt his pockets because that's the way that people are going to pay attention. Um. What I would say is, back to what I said prior, be careful, you know, men. I surprised, I said this on previous cast, so know what you're dealing with. Um, communication. Don't assume that since you may be who you are, or don't assume since, you know, you might have had a two-second conversation or ten-minute or just because you're vibing with a female that y'all might be into the same thing. Communicate, you know, let her know, hey, this is what I like. That's what I like. Or know yourself. If you know that when you do, uh, when you drink certain um, drinks or, you know, when you turn up off of certain things that you like certain things or you um, um, do things in a certain way, like you said, be with somebody that you know likes that. You know what I'm saying? But if you get... If you with a damn near a stranger or if you with somebody that you don't really interact with or intermingle with on a, on a normal occasion and you under a certain substance or, you know, yeah, under a certain substance, know yourself. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to say no, man. 
like self control is the best control. I say this. I say this quite often. You know, I don't say this on here as much as I should, because y'all need to get that into your brain. Self control is the best control. Like a nut ain't always important, man. A nut ain't always important. Like sometimes you you just gotta look out for self. Like, all right, look, I'm in this situation. I'm in this circumstance. I don't know if this woman might like to do with this. What I do? All right, bet. All right, whatever. I I, I don't. She don't. All right, like chalk it up. Not this time. Let me go on to the next. You know, because you could, like you said, you could be doing something that, that you like. And the woman might not like that. She might not be into that. So she could feel some type of way about what you're doing and how you performing, you know. So at the end of the day, man, I can't I can't say, you know, because it hasn't, hasn't been a lot to develop on her story. So you being a man, self-control is the best control. Women, uh, be careful. Both sides communicate so y'all know what y'all both want. Whether it's a temporary thing, mm -hmm. longevity thing. Communicate so y'all know which direction y'all going. Yeah, and we'll wrap it up there. Next, the U.S. government has gathered evidence that um, Grand Theft Auto Online um, has been used by the Mexican cartel to recruit new drug runners um there was a lady who said that she met a man named george on the um <laughs> she met a man named george on okay, the, the game a lot. and um they started she said hey let's meet up she said i was on my way to meet up with him and i was like what the fuck am i on i still went she went to meet up the person. She became a runner. She was like, he was like, if you drop this package off to Mexico, he you'll, said, you'll he get said. two racks. And she was like, shit, two racks <laughs> to drive through, across the border? Fuck it. I don't right. know what the fuck is in there, but I can drive this motherfucker across the border for 2000 And so right. they, of course, the Border Patrol found it. And, you know, now she's reprimanded. And, um, yeah, that all she happened. She played on. not guilty, too. Yeah, she played she not, guilty. not guilty. And too. all this happened on Grand Theft Auto. You know what? I feel and like I'm it's... not fucking surprised because the, the cartel, you know, I watch a lot of cartel shit. You know, I'm very interested in them because they are fucking intelligent as fuck. They are so smart, okay? They they figured it out. Nigga, it's no way that the government is going to ever put no fucking locks on these niggas. They're going to figure it out every time. That's why I like the cartel. The cartel is 10 steps ahead of us, like, our mental. It's like the shit that they do to get shit into Mexico is crazy. And it's like it's something that you can't even think of. Like, grant that follow online, like, Ain't nobody recruiting. thinking nobody is recruiting nobody recruiting. on there. Off online. Virtual world. Virtual reality. Y'all talk about the metaverse. It's already here. Hey. Already so here. every time I just hey, I want I don't want <laughs> I was about to say I want them to keep doing this because I just like work I was like watching their like their their documentaries and their movies on the shit that they do because it's so crazy it's like something that you cannot just even imagine and they getting the shit they're getting the shit over there and by any means fucking necessary and it's like once they call on you and she she got called on to go over there once she went over there and met with george she couldn't do nothing after that she had to she fucking do now. something with the cartel once now. they call on you what the fuck you gonna do say the fuck no you're done you locked in you're done so you're it's done. like what the fuck did the, the U.S. government know good and damn well? If somebody you know, call on, if they call on somebody, they got to go. I like the creativity. So man. it's 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 crazy. Like they just on a different level. That organization, those organizations on a different level. These motherfuckers are smart, intelligent. If they gotta be doing some, they gotta have teachers and stuff. It's you can tell like that they're like I've seen. People I know, like, have, you know, went over to different countries and, and, you know, been teachers over there and stuff. Like, clearly are learning from something. They're just, their minds are just so on a different level. So, it's so interesting to see how they get stuff over there. And so, this was just a very interesting read for me. So, it was, in, you know, this is very, this is one of my interests. So I, like, I, really I like this topic. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I really it. Like, like this topic. I, the cartel is just so smart. smart. They're yes, so fucking smart. smart. Like, they're just on a different level. Because uh, the 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 way as a business to stay ahead of your competition is by reinventing yourself. That might be yourself. why I like and utilizing 
your tools to, to your advantage. It. Because it's the strategy. Tool. Yeah. It's strategy. It's strategy. They're strategy. always changing their strategy on how to get it over there. Yeah. It's constantly changing. And, you know, and so in order for you to be a successful business, like Stephen was saying, the strategy has to continuously change. And so that's, that's probably, a, that's that's probably what, I, what I'm taking what, from yeah, it. Yeah, for think that's, sure. I think that's true. For sure, because it's, their strategy definitely changed. And the thing is, they went virtual with it. Virtual. You know, and um, they not only got people from Grant that follow, they got people from Free Fire, which is similar to Fortnite. And they got lookouts from Free Fire. Like they said, like, you know, they probably playing the games, well, not one whoop. And they're going to pay, you know, a youngster. You know, youngster being of age, probably 18 or older, to be a lookout for them. You know, hey, be a lookout. We give you this such and such money. Boom. Ah, they look lookout. Like, bam. Like, damn, hold on. Like, yeah, such and such coming. They whistle. They they might connect with them on the game. So, they have no real trail. You know what I'm saying? This is motherfucking XYZ37123 on the motherfucking game using the VPN. And they don't know where the fuck he's coming from. And this motherfucker look out like saying, action, hey, we got we got action. You know what I'm saying? Just tell me when we got action. We got action. And so, boom, they told her where they got action. So, that's a lookout that's getting paid. And then a lady, I looked I, um, looked into it. They said electronics. That's what she said. She said that they told them to deliver electronics from America to Mexico. <laughs> I'm pass, like, electronics. Pass. Like that's hilarious. Yeah, so. I, I commend them on the way that they're utilizing technology. You know, it's I mean, I don't want to say that I that I condone violence or that I condone Yeah, we're not um, condoning that the, I condone the violence illegal doing. violence and illegal things. Because it's, it's illegal, but I I do respect them for keeping up with the times, for sure. Yeah. Like the business man in me respects the way that they're doing the business <laughs> right they respect their strategy like yeah they're, it's just they're, interesting they're and intriguing with and with also it yeah so it's like damn they're using that virtual world and people not even tapped into that and y'all already using it like mm-hmm. utilizing it that that's that's definitely a hey, kudos i don't know say kudos I don't know. <laughs> kudos. But um, that was very interesting, and you know, hey, it, it just keeps it just makes makes me stay on top of my strategy, and so whatever y'all doing, I hey, I need to stay on top of my strategy. That's what they that's teaching me. So that is it for the Sawcast. Thank you it's guys for listening cast. and like, share, subscribe, subscribe right now. Did y'all subscribe? Did you subscribe? Did you subscribe? Check in. Tap subscribe in. Subscribe right now. Push the button. When you see this post, like share it, that shit. Like it. Share it. It's just the like. Damn. You niggas just like the shit. God damn. Period. I that. And so thank y'all for listening. And we'll see y'all niggas next week. Next Tuesday. This is so good. <laughs>